Today I'm going to show you how to do a do-it-yourself posi pin system on a Thompson sewing machine. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is somewhat self-induced and self-inflicted. I'm repairing and restoring a machine. Obviously I'm going to repaint this wheel and the whole machine. And I was cleaning off and sanding down some of the parts with emery cloth and I loosened these two parts up a bit too much. And so the machine is slipping now. Even with the lock nut installed and the screw on end, the wheel is still slipping frequently and that's because I reduced the friction between these two components that are here. So my solution to this is to drill a hole in the top and then install what's called a grub screw in between these two components here. And once you have all the parts, it's relatively simple. I already did one screw on this side and I didn't get it on video, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a, another one on the other side over here. Um, I think by screwing the wheel a little bit, you're going to uh, cause the wheel to be slightly unbalanced. And I don't know yet if this is really going to be emphasized once the machine is turning significantly but you don't have to remove too much with the drill bit and I don't think it's really going to impact the uh, sewing machine that much so I'm going to show you how to install a grub screw to lock the sewing wheel onto the shaft so the idea is that this part is going to go onto the shaft of the machine and there's a roll pin that goes through this and the shaft that locks this to the shaft of the machine. And what we're going to do is install and thread a screw hole here or anywhere on here that you end up doing that where you can install a grub screw. Now a grub screw is sort of like a roll pin except it just screws in with a hex bit on the top. This is an oversized one and not the size that I actually used. This is a M6, but I kind of wanted to show you what it looked like. Um, the size that I ended up using is an M4 8mm. So I bought this grub screw set on Amazon for about 10 bucks and it came with a bunch of different sizes. And then I brought, I bought a few of these tap sizes. I actually got two and a half, three, and four, but two and a half and three are actually really small. So I went with four because that's what I had purchased the, uh, the tap size for. Um, so you'll need the tap, you'll need a tap wrench. This is a star at one and this is actually pretty good. It's the most expensive piece to get this job done. You'll need some drill bits that can drill through metal and a drill bit that's the appropriate size for an M4 screw. Now an M4 screw takes a 3.3 millimeter drill bit and I didn't have one that size. So I did a test and I went with a 9 64th drill bit. I measured it with the calipers and this size actually works okay and well for an M4 metric tap. So the idea here is that we're going to drill, and I have a drill press, a small one, but you probably want a drill press to do this. We're going to drill a hole from the top of the wheel and then down into the center portion here. The top hole on the wheel is slightly larger so that the grub screw can actually go through that freely and then screw in to the uh, appropriate size hole down here. Now to do this on a drill press, I made this very simple, quick jig. It's actually all glued together and the wheel just fits down there. This way it's not moving around as I try to screw into it. It's hard to show on camera, but this hole, this ring here is actually offset and in more than this ring. So when you drill the hole you have to come pretty far back on the lip back here but you can't come too far back because then you'll go through the flare that's on the inside here. So I went probably a millimeter out from the end. 
But overall, this is probably a, I don't know, a 10 minute job and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it. You can see how freely this spins. There's really no friction there stopping it from spinning. Um, and that's part of the reason why it's slipping so much on my machine. The first thing you'll want to do is remove this part from the machine. I'm going to use the drill press and when I made this jig I left some lifts on the sides here so that I could use clamps to basically clamp it down to the drill press so that it wouldn't move while I was drilling it. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the punch tool to just start a hole this way the drill bit doesn't move around. And that's about a millimeter away from the farthest portion on the lip. So the first bit I'm going to use is the smaller one. This is the 9 64ths bit. And this is just to get the holes started for the top part. So go ahead and get that installed. Make sure it's up high enough so that you can get the jig on. Use some clamps to hold down the jig. Tighten down the drill bit. Put some eye protection on, of course. There will be little bits of metal floating around here. If you have it, put a little bit of tap fluid, tap oil on the bit, turn the machine on, let's get our first hole started. All right, let's do this. through the center. Do that all at the same time before you move the wheel around and this way you get everything done in one shot. Once you have that first hole drilled, go ahead and pull this out of the jig and wipe it down and wipe all the metal shards and pieces into a trash can so they don't end up on the floor and we're about halfway done here. So we drilled from here, down into here, through the center piece here. And I can see the hole. Now there's a lot of metal shards in here on these threads and stuff, so I take the can air, I'm just gonna blow them out. And before I do that, I'll take some Q-tips and I'll just clean them out. Take this screw here, Make sure this still screws on and that the threads aren't messed up. And even with two holes, this still screws on tightly and nicely. All right, so next up we're going to tap the holes that are in the center piece here for the grub screw. And we also need to drill this hole bigger so that we can actually get the grub screw through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole bigger and then that will allow me to get the tap itself through this hole and into this hole easily. So I've got the wheel back in the jig, the hole facing up, a 3 16th drill bit installed in here. This is what we're going to use for the, uh, the larger hole on the top. We need our tap cutting fluid, eye protection on. The jig itself is held down with some clamps here. And let's get started. that hole goes a lot easier because we've already pre-drilled it. Let's go ahead and clean off all those little metal pieces. We'll put them in the trash can. All right, so we're ready to tap these. 
So just a reminder, there's a 3 16 drill bit, drill hole size, drill bit size up here. And then down here on these two pieces, there's a 9 64 drill bit size. And these are the ones that we're going to uh, tap and put threads in so that the grub screws can be screwed into these, right? Mm -hmm. Now you could countersink this hole up here if you want. I'm actually just going to file it down and make it as smooth as possible. I don't think I want to countersink it because I don't want to div it in there. This hole is small enough. It doesn't feel like it's going to catch on my finger if I grab the wheel while it's spinning. Uh, it's not big enough for a fingernail or anything to get stuck into. But you'll want to clean up these holes here after uh, everything's threaded and tapped. So I'm going to use this handy Starit tap wrench, which was surprisingly expensive 30 bucks but is extremely useful for really small taps and as we can see the tap actually fits in there which is great let's make sure all the holes are lined up which they are cool let's see so I'm gonna put some tap fluid on the tap itself this down here and just start spinning. If you get any resistance just back it out a little bit. Do this until the tap itself goes through both pieces and you can see it in the center. And there we go. tap is all the way through and showing in the center of this I'll go ahead and take this out this is an M4 tap and I'm using an M4 by 8 millimeter grub screw to hold it in and we're almost done I'm gonna go ahead and clean out these holes clean out the threads I'll probably blow some air in there and get as much of the uh, metal shards cleaned up on this as possible. All right, so let's see how this works. So we'll take our tiny grub screw, we'll thread it on the Allen wrench, goes in through the larger hole on the top, comes down on the center, should screw in nicely, and lock those two pieces together. Okay, now you don't want it to come out through the center because then you'll block the uh, the end nut from screwing on. These eight millimeter ones fit really well. Both of them are installed. You probably don't need two. I think one is enough. And that still screws on. So this is a modification you would probably want to make if your machine is slipping a lot and you can't figure out why. Um, this isn't a modification for everyone as it does damage the wheel. Um, you can see that the drill bit created a, a few some divots up here. And I'm going to repaint this so I'm not worried about how it looks right now. But you'll probably end up with some um, interesting looking holes if you do this. But if you need to do it and it's an older machine as it should be because it's a Thompson. This is a, a, a do-it-yourself posi pin implementation you can try. Thank you for joining me.